About two minutes away from the end of the trading day, Scarlett Fu and Alex Steele here counting you down to the closing bell and here to take you beyond the bell is Carol Masser and Tim Stenovic uh, from Bloomberg Radio. And of course, uh, welcome to all of our audiences across our various platforms. You know, we were just talking about the jobs report and mm. how that's gonna mm. be the next big catalyst because it just feels like we're treading water here. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like the markets don't know quite what to do, certainly on the equity side of things, but we're waiting. We didn't get anything really new from Jay Powell, surprise, surprise, but do we see more strength in the labor market that starts to make people say, okay, folks, let's really think about what the Fed needs to do this year. Maybe they don't need to do much. I know I've been focused on this throughout the day, Carol, but we did get something You've new from You've been focused on Bluey, the new no. cover story business. <laughs> Yes, that is Bluey. <laughs> He's totally been obsessed, guys. Have you guys seen the cover of Business Week? Okay, yes, I have. And Tim, this is this is you and me because we have young kids. These guys, these guys don't know the Bluey thing. Oh, I do not. but it turns out I read the story, Alex, and it turns out that um, there are adults without kids who like Bluey too. Ooh. Yeah, but Scott and Carol don't have that kind of time. But I hear you. But I hear you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're so right. The episodes are only seven minutes. Uh, it's totally worth it, guys. Just okay. Anyway, we, we got off track. What were you talking about? So, oh, I was actually going to so say. Sorry. I was actually going to say that uh, we did learn some new stuff from Jay Powell, which I thought was interesting at the what? end of his what speech. What did we learn? That was, oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, like he gave advice to these college students about you know what was his advice? Ju jumping around from job to job, <clears throat> making sure you have the self confidence to take the step and go to that next job. He talked about moving from private equity to the public sector and moving back and forth Wait, between so the private sector. Wait, so he said sector. you should job hop? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't totally that mode well for me, Scarlett and Carol? Oh, we're all taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> exactly. Jay Powell telling college kids that they should job hop. Okay. All right. I don't know how you price that into the market, but uh, we are looking at uh, a mixed day here for equities. Uh, certainly when you look at the major indexes, the S&P 500 gaining about one-tenth of one percent, the Dow losing ground just slightly, losing about 35 points, a drop of one-tenth of one percent, and the Nasdaq up by a quarter of one percent. It should be noted that the Russell 2000 is the outperformer here, up by a whopping half of one percent. Job hopping, you know what you do? It's like jolts, well, right? Okay. Maybe there is a connection. Okay, I should clarify. He wasn't talking about job hopping. He was talking about like moving from one industry to the other, going into the private sector and serving, and making sure that people have the confidence that they can, you know, that they can pull off these jobs. I love that we went there, though, right? Yeah. Do, do you know how long Scarlett, Carol, and I total have been at Bloomberg? I have no idea. A okay, long a long time. time. <laughs> decades. It's decades, a great place. Decades. But this is also from Jay Powell, who knows he's probably going to be unemployed no matter who's president. In the oh. next go, so I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Ooh. Anywho, wow, okay. his, his term's gonna end at some point. All right, yeah. all right. So. All right. Who's yeah. going? Scarlett, yeah. IMAP? Is no, I'm going to, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, go Scarlett. All right, let's, let's look at the IMAP. Why don't we do that? Um, we have more sectors in the green than in the red. Uh, let's start with the red parts of the pie. Consumer staples off by more than 1%. So they're the leading laggards here. Utilities and financials also under a bit of pressure. In terms of the gainers, you have communication services, energy companies, which are really rising in tandem with oil prices as oil prices rise for a fourth straight day and materials. Uh, a late dark horse here coming up uh, with a six tenths of one percent advance. All right, guys, let's get to some of the individual gainers. Um, Spotify on that list up uh, more than 8% in today's session. Bloomberg reporting that the uh, streaming company plans to raise the price of its popular. Oh. I know. <laughs> so See, painful. inflation not going away, everyone. Uh, so they're raising the price of their service in several key markets for the second time in a year. Uh, they say, or we say, we report a crucial step toward reaching long-term profitability. This is going to people familiar. They're getting ready to offer more tiers. So stand by for news on that. Uh, but nonetheless, investors, liked it. Yeah, sure, but not we consumers. All right, Ford Motor, uh, up just shy of 3% in today's session. U.S. auto sales rising 7% in the first quarter. Strong demand for gas electric hybrids. Uh, hybrid models, guys, check this out, surging by 42%. Their F-Series truck, always its bestseller, fell 10%. Wow. Uh, yeah, exactly, during that time frame. But uh, nonetheless, investors were kind of um, good about the overall news. And then this one, courtesy of my co-host, uh, Tim, giving me this name, Calmain Foods. Uh, we are, I don't know if you are, but I am, we are all eating eggs, apparently. Um, shares jumping, this went up about 3.6% in today's session. Uh, the biggest egg producer in the United States, uh, reporting third quarter earnings per share and net sales a topped uh, consensus estimates. They said that's totally Total sales volumes uh, or dozen sold hit a company record. So we're eating a lot of eggs. And I do have to mention Paramount because it really um, jumped about 14, 15% in today's session. This after Redstone Skydance striking a tentative deal for their Paramount stake. Well, because so. there's, a, there's a bird flu situation happening. Oh, I forgot to add that. Thank you for With that. The Yesterday. Eggs, which is the issue in Texas. Yeah. 
the company did call about 3.6% of its flock. That's how they say it. So people were because still eating the flu. same amount of eggs. <laughs> it's unclear. It's a supply and demand thing. In right. this crowd, maybe we're eating more eggs. Anyway. Okay, supply. how about supply and demand for chips? Let's talk about that. I do want to talk about we're some not of the worst chips. performers. Well, potato chips, maybe. Yeah, not this kind of chips. No. I do want to talk about Intel. The news breaking late yesterday, uh, during our simulcast, actually, um, and Intel shares reacting today as a result down 8.2%, declining the most in a couple months after the company gave a disappointing uh, outlook for its factory operations saying that losses have deepened at the business and it may not reach a break point for a couple of years. We're talking about Intel Foundry, which is a new division over at Intel that does manufacturing, and it had sales uh, of $18.9 billion in 2023. It was down $27.5 billion uh, from the previous year. Um, I also want to talk about Ulta Beauty uh, because uh, shares fell uh, 15%. There? I have not shopped at oh, Ulta, okay. um, but shares down 15%, the biggest drop since March of 2020. You actually saw um, a lot of uh, peer companies move lower in sympathy. This after uh, management made comments during JP Morgan's Retail Roundup Investor Conference earlier today in New York. Um, the company said the first quarter started off slowly, a broad-based slowdown across beauty categories. Uh, Ulta now anticipates first quarter comp sales to come in at the lower end of the low single-digit growth range it had forecast for the first half of its fiscal year. And it also says that it lost market share and prestige make up the hair category also, according to Ulta, has been challenging. Finally, worth checking in on shares of Disney today uh, after uh, Bob Iger's win. Shareholders, of course, rejecting Nelson Peltz's bid for a board seat. Uh, shares finishing it down a little more than 3%, Alex. Uh, I should point out, Carol, um, that Scarlett buys her face cream from Costco. Okay. <laughs> Putting this out there. I'm still investing in my face. I just do it at bulk pricing, Our, which Our, I appreciate. <laughs> well, like, well, like Alex made that remember? comment about the years we've been here. Uh, at this point, you do buy it in bulk. We all do. <laughs> okay, but at Costco? Anyway. At Costco. They have some high-end stuff at Costco, Alex. Okay, you just, I, I'll you, take you there sometime. You just keep talking about that. Um, okay, she but, looks um, amazing. She does, I did Alex, say. I, I make fun of her, but she looks exactly the same there, when I met her 12 years ago. There is a Costco exactly. in Brooklyn. She change. There is a Costco in Brooklyn. There is a Costco in Brooklyn. You might want to check We'll take you there. I, oh, yes, there is. Near Industry City, yes. Yeah. I don't want to go there. <laughs> um, okay, uh, bonds, it's nothing. Nothing's happening in bonds. The conversation to me, though, will you see the 10-year get to 5%? I feel like we're starting to talk about that uh, a little bit more in a way that we weren't just even a few weeks ago, guys. All right, guys, we are getting ready, you know, Friday for that jobs report. Mm -hmm. How do you think, how do you feel about a four-day work week? Uh, I mean, I feel great question. about it, and it's never going to happen. <laughs> so great. Why don't you think it's ever going to happen, Alex? Because we work in media. News doesn't That's sleep, true. man. News well, does not stop. I think the only way it would happen for us is if markets, you know, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ decided to have four day, four week, four day a week trading, which I mean, they're I moving in the opposite happen. direction for a number of years, right? They were talking about after hours trading and 24 hour trading. That would have you know, wreaked havoc on our lives. But I guess that's at the point where you bring in robots and AI to, to do our jobs for us. Steve Cohen says it's coming. But he says really? not for, but not for his workers, because he said if you're running basically a portfolio or managing a portfolio, <laughs> you got to be there every day that the market's open. So who does he see the four-day work week for? Uh, Anyone who Mets wants to players? go play golf and yeah, go to Mets games. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, speaking of robots, did you guys see the story uh, about Apple? Love. Uh, Mark Gurman sort of breaking that story about Apple potentially getting into the robot world after uh, the car uh, situation went nowhere. I guess I'm just curious as to the, the push should be AI, right? Like, why a robot? I guess I'm a little confused as to the longer term strategy and how that sells them services. I mean, I, what's their track record on home appliances or smart projects or smart you know, products around the home that Well, that they, really the Apple Home, you? which, which has but, to, oh, you know, not great. Yeah, but exactly. I, I think one could argue that the iPhone is, is sort of like well, the hub of everything. And they've just dominated so then you in that need a category. Robot? That's what I'm saying. I don't know if you need you know, a robot. This is kind of perfect because in the story it says it's not yet clear what approach it might take <laughs> in terms of what they're going to do. I mean, I don't know. I use Google Home and different things to like turn on lights and stuff like that, or I ask it questions. But I don't know. I, I don't know what a robot like. Maybe it's like a Siri comes to life. Does it type clean of thing. up? Does it clean up? Does it do dishes? That's oh, what I hey, for. if then it cleans in. up and sweeps, I'm all in. <laughs> but then you also can have a Roomba. So I mean. I don't know uh, what the situation is, but but I think it is interesting. The Internet of Things was what we were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, eight years ago as being the trillion dollar industry, and then it feels yeah. like we moved on then to AI in a different capacity. So where that still lives, particularly for Apple. Look, this is a really important question that investors have of where Apple goes after the iPhone. And Mark broke the story a few weeks ago that they've given up on the car, so it's not going to be a car. So where does the company go from here to create that new product? And category? they're under pressure, right? They're under all yeah. kinds oh, of regulatory yeah. pressure from the government as well. So they need to come up with a new product line. What I want to know is, um, 
Scarlett messaged me what kind of skin cream that Okay, is. we'll talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is a wrap. Carl does fancy <laughs> stuff like me. <laughs> Across platform coverage, radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals. We call it Beyond the Bell. We'll see you guys same time, same place tomorrow.